Hey, good morning. Good morning to everyone. Um, it is such a blessing to be <clears throat> alive and well, giving God the praise, the honor, and the glory for all he's doing, all he has done in our lives. We are so grateful to have this opportunity to share the word of God with you one more time. So we give God the praise for each and every one of you. Want to say uh, thank you. Thank you uh, once again for being a part of uh, this time of fellowship around the word of God. I want to also uh, give God praise for each and every one of you. Welcome and thank you for being here uh, once again. Can't say that enough. Uh, I, I feel so privileged each and every time we come together like this around the word. Uh, it is it is truly an honor for me. Uh, and I, I, I pray that uh, this uh, these sessions, the, uh, these times of fellowship uh, are really blessing you, really causing you to start to think uh, more about what God's will is for for your for your lives, <clears throat> that you will uh, truly understand that God has a plan. I mean, a plan in advance when we found out uh, that last week when we looked into the scripture that uh, he he chose a people in advance, glory to God, and we are those people that he chose in advance to uh, give birth to the Savior of the world, as well as carry the message of salvation to the world. What a wonderful thing, and uh, that responsibility is uh, what we have to shoulder, uh, but you know, he's, he's given us the ability, he's given us everything we need. Uh, the scripture says he's given us everything that pertains to both life and godliness. So um, don't don't ever doubt that uh, if God be for you, who can be against you? So uh, let's get into this. I want to say welcome to Super Sunday. Uh, this is that time of the year where, you know, we've been promoting this thing. And today is that day that we uh, celebrate what we call Super Sunday. Uh, Super Sunday is that day where everybody decides based on what the Holy Spirit has said to them, uh, what they will give today. That gift um, helps this ministry accomplish the things that it does throughout the year. Uh, so it's that one time a year that we set aside to say, listen, uh, seek God uh, and let him lead and guide you in your giving. And so we just give God praise for that and pray that you've done that already. If not, uh, uh, at, at least by the end of this message, Holy Spirit will speak directly to your heart and give you directions on, on, on what to do as far as uh, Super Sunday and sowing your seed. So uh, with that being said, uh, let's let's have prayer and we're going to get directly into the word. I, I want to try to make sure we get uh, everything out today if, that, that we possibly can um, because this word is life changing for each and every one of us. Uh, so let's pray. Father, we thank you and honor you for this time of fellowship around your word. Thank you for these your sheep that have come. And Lord, we thank you that uh, the word goes forth this morning unhindered by any sat satanic force and it will accomplish all that it's been set out to do. In Jesus name we pray. And everybody said amen, amen, amen. So um, this is the third um series or, or the third installment in this series, um, this session of Don't Be Like Esau. Um, when when we started, we started in Genesis 25, in Genesis 25, uh, somewhere around verse 30, uh, verse 21 through um, 34, it talks about how uh, Isaac and his wife, Rebecca, um, they, they're married, they can't produce. And so Isaac sought the Lord and the Lord answered and uh, Rebecca became pregnant and the two children on the inside of her struggled. Uh, I think the New Living Translation said that, that they were rivals and that they're, they're, they're still being rivals today. Those those two children, those twins uh, is Esau and Jacob. Um, Jacob catches the heel of his brother. Uh, but I want you to know as, as Hebrews, uh, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Uh, the scripture tells us that, uh, God said 
Esau I hate and Jacob I've loved. I believe it was Dr. Donald Gray Barnhouse who said, uh, if you're going to marvel at anything, marvel at the fact that he said he loved Jacob because we know Jacob uh, uh, got his brother's birthright because he couldn't wait, even though God had promised and prophesied that the older would serve the younger. Um, he couldn't wait. He, he, he got it by uh, exchanging a, 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 a bowl of pottage. Uh, he also, uh, he and his mother got together and decided to trick his father out of the blessing. All of these things happened because of that mindset that Jacob had. But we also know that Jacob finally met the Lord, wrestled with him, and would not turn him uh, loose, would not let him go until the Lord blessed him. So I'm saying that uh, no matter where you are today, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how, how, how big the struggle may be, do not let God go. Do not turn your back on him. Uh, stay right there. Uh, you know, don't run from him, run to him with whatever your situation is and watch him uh, bless you. Watch him turn it around. Glory to God. Watch him cause things to work out uh, in the end. I, I, I'm, I'm talking to somebody this morning because you're struggling right now with your past. And I'm telling you, uh, your past is over. It, it's it's done because he has a plan for you. Listen, he he calls you in advance. Glory to God. He chose you in advance. He he has judged you fit to receive his favor. Glory to God. God Himself, the Most High, Yah Himself, has judged you fit to receive His favor on your life. So so listen. Don't let him go. I don't let him go. I, I, I know you're struggling in a relationship. You're trying to figure out how to break this off or how to move on. But I'm telling you, do not let God go. Do not turn him loose. Stay right there where you are with him and watch him do for you that like no other power can do. He's the only one that can turn it around in your life. He's the only one that can take a past and make it a bright future. He's the only one. Listen, when you're going to you're going to hear people say, "I remember when you used to do this." And you can shout and give glory to God then because they see the change in your life. Look, 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 look. You already know what God has called you to do. I'm telling you to pursue it now with all your all your passion, with all with with the, with all your, every fiber in your being. Listen, go ahead and begin to pursue it because He said, "Listen, I'm, I'm taking you out of that Jacob mentality." Glory to God. Listen, you're not catching heels anymore. I'm calling you Israel now because your God prevails. Ah, glory to God. So when people ask you, how'd you do it? How'd you get there? You just tell them, my God prevails. Glory to God. Amen. And because of that, you'll begin to see uh, him use you in mighty ways. He, you begin to see him bring people uh, to him in mighty ways because you said, I wouldn't let God go. I was a mess, but I wouldn't let God go. I was struggling, but I wouldn't let God go. So remember now, we're no longer Jacob. Now, I want to get back to this message because I want to remind you of who you are. And, and we must always remember who we are. We are the, the you know, the so-called African, African Americans in this country. We are the chosen people of God. We're God's people. Amen. We are God's people. We're the ones that he said the older will serve the younger. It's, 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 it's here. Glory to God. And I, I'm, listen, people are struggling. They, listen, they're trying to do all kinds of stuff. They, 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 they trying to pass laws in Georgia, but I'm telling you, they cannot override what God has said. Listen to me. Listen, listen. They 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 call it a, a revolt or, or all this other stuff. Instead of calling them terrorists, 
I'm telling you, you cannot override what God has said. So don't forget that we are God's people. Now, we need to also remind, I need to also remind you of who Esau is. Uh, he, he, he will always, you, you'll know Esau because he's always putting himself, his own personal needs, his own personal desires before the will and the word of God. It, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a temporary thing, but he can't wait. He's always trying to be out front. Listen, Esau was a hunter. He, he so, so he's always coming up with a way to, to, uh, inflict injury. He's always coming up with weaponry uh, because that's his strong suit. That's his mindset. Uh, he's the one that came up with weapons of mass destruction. So remember, that's an Esau mindset. Listen, listen. Uh, remember Esau, when he gave up his birthright, he simply said, what's holy is common. I, it don't matter as long as I get what I want, as long as I get what I desire. Uh, don't forget, Esau's, an Esau mindset is one that will always be out front of the will and the word of God. He will take uh, for himself before he gets uh, uh, to do what God has called him to do. As long as he come out on top, he's all right. As long as he feel like he's satisfied, he's all right. Uh, regard. Now, listen, listen, the birthright gave him both responsibilities and inheritance. Hear me, hear me real good. It gave him a position and an inheritance. That birthright was so important because when the father uh, uh, leaves off the scene, now the one with the birth birthright becomes the priest of the family. Y'all, y'all need to hear this. God has given you that position of birth. Oh, listen, you, we are all priests and kings unto our God. Hear me real good. You are the priest of your family. What does the priest do? Stand between the family and God and ministers on their behalf. Listen, your family is blessed because you understand your position. Glory to God. See, don't go after inheritance. Go after position. Oh, hallelujah. Father, help me fulfill the call of God on my life that I might take care, maintain, uh, operate in the position that you put me in. And once you understand and master the position, now the inheritance comes. Why? Because the one with the birthright gets a double portion of the father's inheritance. I wish I had some help this morning. <laughs> Glory to God. So you, 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 you gonna, you gonna go after fulfilling the responsibility. Now, now remember this. When you talk about the responsibilities, we're talking about fellowship. Fellowship. Koinonia is the word in the Greek. Koinonia simply means shared resources and shared responsibilities. Ah, glory to God. If God can get you to uh, be that resource, he has no problem giving you, uh, uh, if he can get you to be the, uh, uh, walk in the responsibility, he has no problem giving you the resources. Are oh, you hearing me? But most of us want resources Glory to God and not the responsibility. I'm telling you, you've been put in the position of priest of your home. Now, 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 listen, listen. It's, it's your home that goes to the school. It's your home that goes to the job. It's your home that goes to the marketplace. It's, it's people from your home. So, so the priest in the house has to prepare all of those people to go into the market. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all better hear me real good. So it's your responsibility, Hebrew. Get yourself in a position now where I'm fulfilling this thing called responsibility. And when I fulfill the responsibility, oh my God, he'll give me all the resources and he'll give me a double portion of it. Glory to God. That's what I like about God. He is not a man that he can lie, nor the son of man that he has to repent. Now, I, I want to try to stay close to my notes this morning because I, I, I got a lot to say. Hear me real good. Esau has an attitude that he always takes for himself. It's all about his personal, temporary need. And that's all. 
it's, it's what he thinks. And I, I shared with you, uh, Isaiah said, let the, let the uh, wicked uh, forsake his way and let the uh, unrighteous man his thoughts. Let the, let the wicked forsake his way. So anytime you find people saying, uh, I, I, they want it their way, it's my way or the highway, that, that God says they're wicked. Watch this. Anytime you find running the people who says, well, I think it ought to go like this. I thought this. Then he says, that person is unrighteous. You got it? Let the wicked forsake his way. Let the unrighteous forsake his thoughts. Ah, glory to God. Because his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are so much greater than ours. Do you get that? So, so, so Esau will always want it his way. Esau will always say, this is what I think. And, and we see that we see that now Esau and the Edomites are still here. That, that mentality, uh, that mindset is still here. And I'm telling you, don't be like Esau. Are you hearing me? Don't be like Esau. I understand that uh, you come from Jacob, but Jacob also was, his name was changed to Israel. God prevails in our lives. Amen. N listen, I'm not prevailing. You're not prevailing. The most high, he prevails. Glory to God. Uh, Jesus said, uh, Father, if that be any other way, let this cup pass from it, but not my will. Your will be done. Are you with me this morning? So, so, so hold on to this now. I, I'm going to move into something here to show you just a little bit more about before one takes for himself. Let's go to second Corinthians chapter nine, second Corinthians chapter nine, starting at verse six. And we're going to try to go down to verse 12, second Corinthians nine through 12, uh, 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 six, second Corinthians chapter nine, verse six through 12. Um, and I'm going to show you some stuff here. Uh, uh, watch this, uh, verse six says, but I say, but this, I say, uh, he would sow sparingly shall reap also sparingly and he would sow bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So, so, so I, I want, I want to, I want to, uh, draw, draw attention to this because uh, yes, yeah, super Sunday, but this, this is all about before you take for yourselves. Uh, when we don't understand that we've been called to follow after the leading of the Holy Spirit to obey uh, what we hear, that, that's the dispensation we're in. If you look at Acts, he says, wait here for the promise. So the promise of the new covenant is the Holy Spirit. And if you're not uh, uh, obeying Holy Spirit, then you're out of the will of God. Hear, hear me real good because the spirit and the word, they both agree. And most of us are struggling with, uh, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know which way to go. Well, I'm telling you, you can always know which way to go because Holy Spirit is still speaking. Uh, I, 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 I heard something or, or something told me, listen, grow up. You, you're being, you're being childish. Grow up and understand that's the voice of the Lord speaking to you. Uh, uh, you know, I, I say it all the time. People say, well, I should have followed my first mind. No, grow up, understand that's Holy Spirit speaking to you. That's how God operates today. He operates in a way where he uh, allow Holy Spirit. He's going to lead in God. When the spirit of truth comes, watch this. When the spirit of truth comes, he will lead and guide you into all truths and righteousness and he'll show you things to come. That's Holy Spirit's job. Now, if you're going to, if you're going to sow sparingly, then you're going to reap sparingly. Listen, you, you cannot give, uh, sparingly. You cannot, uh, allow yourself to be measured in obeying what Holy Spirit is telling you. You have to uh, give completely, give totally what he's saying because he's not the God of scarcity. He's the God of abundance. Come on, talk to me now. If you're going to see increase, you're going to have to obey him. Glory to God. See, because when you sow properly, you get 30, 60, and 100 fold. Yeah, glory to God. Now, now I'm not just talking about money.
money. I'm talking about in every area of your life. See, Esau has a mindset that he wants to take and take and take. And then once he begins to take, he likes the hard glory to God. So it, everything that he has is what he, I, I believe it was uh, Kenneth Hagin says, he he takes everything he can and, and put it in the can and then sit on the can. Listen to me real good. That's not going to work because he says, if you're so sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. Now watch verse seven. For every man, every man, according as he purposes. Now that word purpose there, it, it simply means before you take for yourself. Watch this. Every man uh, before he takes for himself, let him give. Amen. Before you consider yourself. Listen, Esau only considers himself. I'm telling you, hear me real good. Uh, some of you are, are, are living a life of lack. Uh, and, and I want to say this, lack should never keep you out of fellowship with, with the most high. Lack should never keep you out of fellowship with the most high. And, and I'm going to show you why, because John chapter two says that there was a wedding in Canaan of Galilee and they ran out of wine. Somebody said they had lack. Glory to God. Now, because they had lack, it didn't stop the fellowship because Jesus, his mother said, here's what I want you to do. Whatever he says to you, that you do. Listen, 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 listen. He says, she said, whatever you, whatever he says, when you're dealing with lack, when you're dealing with abundance, when you're dealing with God, period, in this dispensation of grace, whatever he says to you, that's what you do. I, I, I know I know that uh, some people preach, man, you got to give 10%. If you're not giving 10%, you're out of the will of God. I'm telling you, whatever he says to you, I, I, I've said it for years, 10% is a a jump off place it's a springboard it's a it's a it's a foundation the mature hear me real good the mature do what they hear ah glory to god but watch this you already have the guidelines before you take for yourself Listen, we're going to give before we take for ourselves. Listen, I know I got the light bill. I know the baby need a new pair of shoes. But before I take for myself, I go to God and God will instruct me what to give. Now, now hear me real good because uh, most people say, oh, you, you got to do this. You got to. No, no, no. I'm being led of the spirit. See, because. Uh, I know people who, when they give 10%, it has not challenged them at all. It's no faith move. Come on, somebody. But I'm, I do know people that when you see them give 10%, that's the biggest act of faith that, oh, I wish I had some help. Watch this. Jesus is standing, watching them give, and here comes an old lady. And she puts in uh, uh, two mites. Come on, somebody, read the scripture. She puts it, and Jesus said she gave more than everybody. Ah, uh, glory to God. She heard from Holy Spirit and obeyed what she heard. Now, everybody may have been given a whole lot more. Uh, it's obvious that they were giving a whole lot more than she was. But what she did was she obeyed what she heard before uh, he take for himself. Let every verse seven, let every man give as he purposed in his heart as he before he takes for himself. And that automatically puts you in the place of abundant giving. Oh, glory to God. When you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. It automatically puts you in the place of bountiful giving. Now, 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 listen, here's what I've learned. I, I used to, I used to challenge people to give so much. I, listen, I, I would stand up in the congregation and I would say, I, I want the first 
however many people to give this amount. I'm going to give this. You know, I, I thought I was doing something special because I was asking people to do what I was doing. But listen, listen, hear me real good. Holy Spirit talked to me and told me to give that. Now I got to put that pressure. Hear me real good. Now I'm putting that pressure on other people. To do what Holy Spirit told me to, uh, y'all, y'all better hear me. Y'all better hear me. Listen, you go to these places and they are standing up and says, okay, who can give this amount? Uh, I remember one time I was, uh, at a meeting and they said, well, we, we got a bunch of bishops in here. No, they got plenty. And we're all the bishops to give this amount. Man, I was like, you gotta be crazy. Th th listen, that was all I had in my pocket. That was not, uh, listen, listen, I'm telling you, sometimes we as prophets, sometimes we as uh, the man in charge or, uh, uh, you know, the head man, set man, whatever, we can be in our flesh. We can be struggling because we're trying to get somewhere. And, and listen, I'm going to use you to get there. Uh, uh, and, and some of us are sincere, but we're sincerely wrong. Hit me real good. And so they, they were trying to put that pressure on me. Listen, I've gone to meetings and they, and they put that pressure on leadership. And man, I'm struggling to pay my doggone light bill when I get home. I, I, I told my church a long time ago, my wife told me years ago, she said, if the lights, if you let the lights get cut off one more time, I'm leaving you. Man, I, I, I was like, uh, God, I can't keep doing it. And he said, I never told you to do that. You were listening to men instead of listening to the one that has your best interest. He says, listen, I know the plans I have for you to do you good and not evil and to take you to an expected end. Now, listen, I'm not saying the prophet is wrong. Uh, I'm just saying he may be wrong about your giving. Come on, somebody. He may be talking to somebody in there, but he's not talking to everybody in there. Hear me real good. You need to learn how to hear from Holy Spirit yourself. If you go back and you read Exodus Right before, somewhere around chapter 18, 19, you'll find out that God wanted to have a relationship with the people. He told Moses, go get my people out of uh, Egypt and bring them here so I can, so they can worship me, so I can have a relationship with them. So they came to that mountain and God began to speak to them and they said, oh no, 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 no. We don't want to hear God no more because his voice is too, too loud. His voice is too scary. Moses, you go get it and t come tell us what God said. Are you crazy? Listen, he wants to have a relationship with you. Don't go back to that old way of doing things where you got to have a man. Listen, listen, listen. There are people that go sit in a little box and say, uh, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. And can you tell me what I need to do now? Listen, listen, listen. Your God wants to have a relation. Oh, I want to I wanna help you this morning. When, when, he, when he created man, he showed up every day in the cool of the day. And listen, he didn't show up when it was hot, so it ought to be a struggle for you to hear from him. So you got to go through this and struggle to get that. No, no, no. It was the cool of the day that they walked in the garden and talked. So he always wanted to have a relationship with his people, his creation. Then he brings them to this place, said, Moses, go get them. I want to have a relationship with them. When he begins to speak to them, they said, no, 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 we can't stand his voice. We want to hear from your voice. Listen, that's why preachers for years have been able to take advantage of the congregation because you don't want to grow up. You don't want to be mature and hear from God yourself. And then you talking about, look at his house. Look at my house. Look at what he driving and look at what I'm driving. Oh, the preacher got this and the preacher got, no, you're the one that wouldn't be mature to hear from God and give what he told you to give. I'm telling you this morning, if you so sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. If you so bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. If you take it uh, uh, before you consider God, you're going to consider your own self. Then you put yourself in that position. Hear me real good. I, I'm not done. I, I got some more stuff for you. Listen to me now. Listen to me. Because this idea that Esau has, Esau has the idea that he's going to take back everything that he can take back before his time runs out. Hear me real good. This mindset of Esau says, I know my time running out. I know I'm stronger, 
but he's already prophesied that I'm going to serve him. So I better try to get everything I can get now. But you're not going to allow that. You're not going to allow that. Hear me really. See, see yeah, listen, I, I want people to understand when we do what we do here at Spirit of Truth, talking about Super Sunday and, 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 and people sowing seed, man, that's wonderful. But I'm not here to make merchandise out of you. I'm here so you can know what God is saying to you. Amen. So that if God leads you, then you ought to be a part of what we're doing. It, it, you ought to see this as an opportunity, not as a heist. Not as somebody twisting your arm and, and taking something from you and that you didn't get a, that you didn't get a return on your seed. I want you to get a return on, on your seed. And, and listen, if, 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 if you hear what I'm saying and the Holy Spirit said, no, don't sow into that. You better obey Holy Spirit. You hear me? Look at verse eight. Look at verse eight. And God is able. Listen, listen. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Every gift abound towards you. L listen, l l let me say this. Uh, uh, it, it, can, can I go back? I didn't finish verse seven. I, I got to go back to verse seven because I missed some stuff and it'll, it'll be an injustice. Watch this. Every man according as he purpose in his heart. Uh, so let him give not grudgingly. Somebody said not grudgingly. So, so when he says not grudgingly, it's not through pain and pressure. And this pressure comes from the outside. Hear me real good. He says, do not give grudgingly. That's the wrong way to give. I, I, I wrote that in, I wrote that in my, in my notes here. The wrong way to give is grudgingly and under guilt and for show. Uh, don't, don't, don't ever give grudgingly under pressure from the outside. Let nobody put the pressure on you from the outside. Hear me real good. No, listen, nobody can stand up in the pulpit and put pressure on you and make you give. That's an Esau mindset. That's an Esau mindset that, that when they put that pressure on you, where they talk in certain ways to make you feel guilty. Now you'll come and bring it. Do, don't do that and never give for show. Listen, listen, I, 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 I've been pastoring for a while. I've had people that I've pastored that would not give on a regular basis. Now, I told you the wrong way to give is grudgingly through guilt and for show. Watch this. The right way to give. The right way to give is in sincerity, secretly, and as a part of your, of your life. Listen, listen, when you give, you give, uh, and let it be through sincerity, not a show, not a show, not trying to impress people. Like I said, I, I, I've had people in our churches uh, over the years that uh, would not give a, as a regular part of their life. In other words, uh, they they did not give anything substantial until there was an opportunity to stand up in front of people. L listen, I had this one guy, he always would do it. If, if there was a project that needed to be done, he would jump up and say, I'm the I'll be the first to give the first $500 or I'll be the first to give the first thousand dollars. But during the year, he gave nothing. So, so it was not sincerity. Uh, and then here's another thing. When you give, you ought to give secretly. Don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing. So, so again, I, I stopped having competition in the church. I, I stopped saying, okay, this is the, this is, this is the $50 club, this is the $100 club, and this is the $1,000 club. No, 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 no. Uh, I, 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 listen, here's another thing I did. I stopped looking at the envelopes. Oh, I wish I had some help. I stopped getting a report from the counting committee. I, I, I stopped. Listen, all I need to know is what we have. I don't need to know what Sister uh, Judy gave. Hear me, hear me somebody. I, I don't need to know what uh, Brother Johnny gave. That's, that's, not, that's not important. What's important is for them to know what they're doing, to, for them to hear the word so that they can uh, uh, get in agreement with it so God can bless them. So, so watch this. Watch this. I, I had a good friend of mine says, listen, when I find out that my leaders aren't giving uh, 10%, I set them down. I said, wow, that's pretty good. How you know when they're giving 10%? Do you have a copy of that W-2? No, it, well, they ought to be making, you don't know what they make. See, see, you, you got to understand that we, we can't take place of the Holy Spirit. 
Now, somebody can be giving 10% and shacking. Is that all right? Somebody giving 10%, but they're a liar. Is that all right? They can give, but never show up uh, to worship. Is that all right? No, come on. Come on. We, we have to do better than that. We have to do better than that. He says, so don't, don't give grudgingly. Don't, 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 don't give based on pressure from the outside. Watch this. Watch this. He says, don't give grudgingly nor of necessity pressure from the inside. Oh, I, I listen, I, I got to have this. I got, oh, if I give this, then God will do this for me, right? I heard the preacher say, if you give, God will always give it back to you. He going to make sure all your needs are met. Yada. Let, let me tell you something. There are times that you give and you're still struggling. Because uh, I, it, there's some things that we need to we need to understand. It's 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 time to 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 grow up now. There are some things that God needs to get out of you. Hallelujah! And sometimes we struggle because we need to get some stuff. We still haven't gotten it out of us. He's he's still working with us. You still greedy. Come on here, somebody. You're still not depending on Him. And you're still in a place where you're giving out of necessity. The only reason I'm giving today is because I'm, I'm behind in something. No, no, no. It ought to be a regular part of your life. It should be secret and it should be sincere. Are you hear me? That's the right way to give. It should be a regular part of your life. I give all the time. Listen, every time something hit my hand, I give. Uh, listen, I, I, I seek God first. Ask him what he wants out of this, what he wants me to do with it first. And then it's always sincerity with it. And it's, I don't, I don't have to tell everybody, well, you know, I gave a thousand dollars for super sun. No, 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 no. See, because it's sincere, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a little testimony. There was a certain amount of money that I wanted to give today, and I said, "Okay, Lord, I, I have this, I have this, but this is what I really want to give." And there was a project here at my house that I I, I I needed to have done, and that was gonna cost just about the same amount of money that I wanted to give. So uh, I'm saying, "How am I gonna do it, Lord? I need your help here because I can't do them both." And so uh, I, I, I get a call from the guy who is responsible for doing it for me. And, he's, and, I, and he says, I'm coming by. I need you to sign this piece of paper, you and your wife, so we can get this job done. I said, okay. And I said, well, let me, let me get a chance to go get a cashier's check so you, you'll have what you need when you go. He says, when is your birthday? I said, my birthday? He said, yeah, when's your birthday? I said, my birthday is in Ju July the 7th. He says, okay, that's close enough. Uh, this job is going to be a birthday gift. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. And now I have, <laughs> y'all y'all don't hear me. It has to be with sincerity. It has to be secretly. And it has to be a part of your regular life. I'm a giver. It's not just because it's a project at the church. It's not just because I, you know, this is an opportunity for me to show off in front of people. It has to be sincerity. It needs to be secret. I don't have to tell everybody what I do. I don't have to stand. I, I don't. I, I know. I know that puts. I've been. In, I've been in that church. I've been in those old, those uh, conferences. I've been there where it puts a lot of pressure on people. But listen, the only people feeling good are the people who are receiving the offerings. And I'm telling you, the scripture says it's more blessed. Acts, Acts chapter twenty verse thirty five. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Hear me real good. Hear me real good. So, so I, I, I'm not against receiving. I believe it. I believe in receiving. I believe in seed time harvest. I believe in it. Amen. But listen, we're under this dispensation called grace. And you need to hear from Holy Spirit when it comes to your giving. Amen. Listen, it would not be grace if you couldn't give 5%. Hear me real good. It would not be grace if you couldn't give 5% and God be pleased with it because that's what he told you to give. If it's by grace. Let it be a uh, Romans chapter 11. If it's by grace, let it be of grace. If it's by works, let it be of works. Hear me real good now. So if, if Holy Spirit tells you give 5%, man, you, you just gave bountifully and you're going to reap bountifully. Listen, listen, don't lie to yourself.
Don't make excuses. Here, here it is. My attitude is before I take for myself, I go to God. I went to God first and said, what do you want out of this? And he said, 20%. There you go. I give the 20%. He says, 30%. There you go. I give the 30%. He said, 5%. Amen. Now, 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 listen, listen, don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Don't have an Esau mentality. Stop making excuses. Listen, listen, we're in a pandemic. Don't, people don't even, you, you don't have to go, you're not even going to church. You don't, not going to the building. That's, so we don't know what you're doing. We don't know if you're doing it, but he knows. Now you can be holding back. You can, you can say, well, look, I, I got some other things to do. I, I'm, I'm just going to hold on to mine until times get better. They you know, they ain't, we ain't in church. No way. But listen, you are the church. You're the ecclesia, the called out ones. You're the ones that he chosen in advance, Hebrew. You're the one. So don't play games with yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Listen, here it is. Don't be deceived. God cannot be deceived. He, he can't be mocked. Whatever man so that shall he read. You can't fool God. And guess what? He won't fool you. Are you hearing me? The, the most high will not be fooled. Watch, watch this. Verse 8. Li, li, listen, listen. Li, verse, verse, the, the, the final part of verse 7. He says, for God uh, loveth a cheerful giver. Uh, the new, uh, I believe it's the uh, Amplified Bible said, he will not abandon nor forsaken. A cheer forgiver. Watch this. Verse 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. All what? All grace abound towards you. That, that all sufficiency or all the gift towards you. That every gift can, can abound towards you. Watch this. He said he, he can make all grace abound towards you. That you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Oh, so this is why he's putting you in the place of, of abundance or bountiful living so that you can now give towards every good work. Uh, uh, help me out here, uh, Holy Spirit. I, I, listen, it, he did not put you in the place of abundance so you can get a bigger house. He did not put you in the place of abundance so you can get a, a bigger car. He puts you in that place of abundance so that you can give now towards every good work. Now, listen, if you have a big house, wonderful. If you have a wonderful car, that's all, that's good. Hallelujah. But, but listen, he did not cause abundance to show up in your life so you can now upgrade. Let me upgrade you. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not it. He, he put you in a place of abundance so you can give towards every good work. What's the good work for you? Is the one that he told you to give to. Amen. Not just my work, not just the thing he told me to give to, but did he tell you to give to that work? And if he told you to give to that work, I'm telling you, you automatically qualify for bountiful living. No spare, sparing living or, or, or sparse living. No, he, he, you qualify now to live in abundance because you heard his voice. You obey. Listen, listen, listen. It, it, it's, it's foolishness. This is what the scripture says for us to compare ourselves among ourselves. Why do we look at people, uh, circumstances, and situations before we decide to give? That has nothing to do with it. You, you, you can't tell I'm doing bad just by looking at me. You can't tell that I'm in need by looking at me. You, you li listen, you think because, uh, what he drives or where he lives, he don't need nothing. No, that's not the case. The, the what you need to understand is what he asks you to do, what he's directing you to do. Why? Because we have cornea fellowship. We are shared resources and shared responsibilities. If I take on the responsibility that God has given me, resources are at hand. Glory to God. Hear me real good. I, I, I got to go, go on. Watch this. Watch this. So, so he's saying you're going to have all sufficiency. You will never have any need for aid or support. Isn't that wonderful? Glory to God. 
God. Amen. You will have, uh, you will never have any need for aid or support. That's what that means to have all sufficient. He can cause you to be in a position where you never have need for aid or support. Listen, if it, people trying to figure out why does it seem like you're always doing well? Because you're just like that little widow woman that put the two mites in the bucket. You did what he told you to do. Amen. You took, listen, uh, little is much. You know the scripture. Don't despise small beginning. All of that stuff comes together, man, because here we are in a time, in a position, in a dispensation where he's fulfilling his word right before our eyes. He's causing increase. I, I've got a, I've got a, a couple at the church, and 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 the and the, um, the, the, uh, the the husband told me. He says, "Man, listen. When I came here, I came here knowing that we supposed to sow. We, I, it was drilled in my head. I was taught it, and and I, I'm always tried to do it because I gave sometimes to the point where I didn't have enough to feed my children." But when you start teaching what you're teaching, he says, for the first time, I've got money in the bank. I've got, I've got, I, I like to say it like this because I'm country. I've got extra. Listen, listen. He said, I'm blessed in so many ways. And, I, and I'm still giving towards every good work. Hear me, hear me. That's all he wants for you. But, but listen, listen, he wants you to be able to fulfill the responsibilities without worrying about what's going on at home. What's going on, you know, that you can take the vacation, that you can do these things. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Now, now, now watch this. He says he can make all grace abound towards you, that you'll have all sufficiency. You'll never have need of aid or support. And I'm telling you, that's the life I want to live. I want to be in that place where I, I, I just, I, hey, look, I, I, I thank you for what you do for me, but it wasn't because I needed aid or support. I thank you for coming alongside and being a blessing to the ministry because you saw it as an opportunity, not just, oh, this boy needs some help. He's struggling so bad. No, no, no. Because this cat, this guy, he walking with God and I heard God say, go ahead and sow into that ministry. Amen. No need for aid or support. I'm talking to, I'm talking to you. I'm talking about your house. I'm talking about your business. I'm talking about everything that concerns you. He says, I can make all grace abound towards you. I can make every gift. That word grace also means gift. I can make every gift show up in your life when you need it. Ah, glory to God. And you won't ever need aid or support from anybody else because remember, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. He's the one that delivers. He's the one that heals. He's the one that uh, prospers. He's the one that does everything. You don't need all that other stuff because you got me. Ah, glory to God. And if you hear from me, every time you hear from me and do like you are uh, instructed to do, you're going to see bountiful living. You're going to see bountiful living. Hear me real good. Let's, let's, let's go on. I got, I got to move. I got to go. Verse nine says, as it is written, he has dispensed abroad. He has given uh, to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Notice now, uh, this is, this is what, listen, listen, listen. He said he wants to put you in a position where your righteousness remains forever. Not, not your house, not your car, not your clothes. Amen. I, 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 I know you, 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 you balling or whatever you want to call it, but that's not, man, come on. That stuff going to fade away. Listen, listen, that stuff going to fade away. If, if, if they drop the bomb, it's gone. But I'm telling you, your righteousness is going to last forever. When, when your grandchildren think about you, they're going to think about how, how righteous my granny was, how righteous Papa was. Watch this. Uh, and, and he left or something. So watch this. Verse 10 says, now he that uh, ministers seed to the sower, both ministers bread uh, for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So he's still talking about righteousness. He, he wants to he wants to make sure that as you sow your seed, your seed will multiply. But not only that, he's going to give you bread to eat. He's going to take care of you. Verse 10 says, uh, now he, uh, ver, ver, verse verse uh, uh, 11, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes uh, through us thanksgiving of God. So so that's where he's trying to get you. So, so you can be thankful all the time. 
Amen. Always being thankful. Uh, verse 12, for the administration of this service, not only uh, supply the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. So watch this. When you, when you get this kind of living, when you get this kind of giving, it creates in you uh, this thing of thanksgiving. It supplies the needs of others, which creates thanksgiving. Listen, you're being thankful because of what God has done in you and through you. And then those that are blessed by you, they begin to thank God. Oh, it was God that showed up on Super Sunday. It was, oh, we, we just thank God for, listen, listen, that, that, that some, sometimes your neighbor is going through and God has called you to help them. Amen. I was listening to uh, Willie Moore Jr. He gave a testimony about going to Branson. He and his wife, uh, with very little in his pocket, met strangers. Uh, and listen, met some white people, older white people. He said they looked crazy. But listen, he, he obeyed the Holy Spirit and followed them to their house. He said, man, we, they could have strung us up or done anything to us, but I was obeying the Holy Spirit. I was praying the whole time. Holy Spirit said, let's go. My wife was uh, didn't want to go, but long story short, the man said, I keep hearing the, the Holy Spirit says there's a certain amount of money that I'm supposed to give you. Come on, man. Listen, don't that bring about a, 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 a praise in your life? Don't that bring about giving glory to God? I mean, strange people, older white people, people you don't fool with. They don't look like they fool with people like you. And they said, this is what God is saying do for you. Come on here. Hey Amen. Listen, they were in a position to do it too. They had that seed that had been multiplied. They had bread to eat. Hey Amen. And it brought about praise. That's what it's all about. Hey Amen. Now, let's go real quick. One more scripture. First Kings, first Kings, uh, chapter 17. Hallelujah. I, I, I gotta go. First Kings chapter 17. Now this is, this is all familiar stuff and we're going to start at verse seven. First Kings, uh, 17. Uh, and I don't know if I'll get through all this. But here's, here's something I need you to understand. Esau will never give before he takes for himself. He'll never give before he takes. He's going to always take for himself. Esau will never give his time. And he will never give up his resources. He never gives before he takes for himself. He, he never really gives his time, but, but a generous giver always gives himself first. Hear me real good. When you understand that who God has called you, see, see, that's a big problem. Uh, we're trying to get the resources so, uh, we can, we can give into a ministry or give towards a project because we're trying to get something back. But the first thing you need to understand is you have to give yourself. You have to give yourself first. And when you give yourself first, listen, listen, stop playing these games uh, uh, like, you, like you're totally committed to God and you're not. Don't do that. Go ahead and give yourself first before you give one dime. Listen, listen, I'll, I'll say it like this. If you're born again, you, uh, man, you got it made. But if you're not born again, you're lost. And I don't see why a lost person would give one dime to the ministry, to the, into the church. Why? That doesn't make any sense. Why would a lost person give money into the church? The, the church whole uh, ideology is to get you born again. But you come to the church knowing you're not born again, knowing you're not committed to God, and you're going to try to, you know, come sneak through the back door. I'm going to give. And so the Lord will bless me. And I, and I know a lot of people who are blessed that are not born again. I understand. But the, the end is coming. And when the end is coming, the lost will remain lost. 
in hell they'll lift up their eyes. So first of all, give yourself. Give yourself. And then make sure you give of your time and your resources. Make sure you give of your time and your resources. Are you hearing me? So uh, uh, First Kings, I, I want to show you this again before you take for yourself. Well, you know the story. We, we don't have to read all this, but but it, 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 here it is. Uh, 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 Elijah is, he's he, been sent to this brook and the brook now ha has dried up. And so, so God says, okay, I'm going to send you to Zarephath. And when I send you to Zarephath, this is going to be first Kings chapter 17 verses 7 through 16. He says, I, I'm, I'm going to send you to Zarephath because there's a widow woman there and I've already tapped her to sustain you. A widow woman has, has no means of support. Uh, and when he gets there, uh, this woman is gathering sticks to make a fire so she can cook this last little meal and all. But she, she says this interesting thing to him. She says, listen, he says, he says, listen, I, I need you to bring me some water. And she, she says, okay, I'll give you water. Now, don't forget, uh, that, that there's been a famine there and it hadn't rained because Elijah was the one that said it won't rain until I say so. So for three and a half years, hear me real good. It has not rained. For three and a half years, it has not rained. But she's got some water. So don't you know water was a valued commodity? But because she had already made up her mind that she and her son was going to, she was going to make this cake and she and her son was going to eat it and die, water didn't even matter to her. Listen, listen, lack should never keep you out of fellowship with the Most High. This woman did not value Holy Spirit. The water represents the Holy Spirit. Listen, all you have to do when you're in lack is tap in the Holy Spirit, what God has given you. She didn't value the water. She said, okay, I'll give you that water because I'm about to eat this last cake. So, so as she was going to get him water, he says, uh, uh, make me a cake. She said, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm going to make this cake for me and my son. He, he said, well, I'll tell you what you do. Do like you say, but make me a cake first. Go ahead and make me a cake first. Because the barrel was low of oil and of meal. And the scripture says that she did make that man a cake. She made the man of God. Li listen, before she took for herself. Just like Esau always putting his own temporary needs in front of the will and word of God, before she took for herself, she says, okay, man, of God, I'm going to make you this cake. And now the scripture goes on to say that when she did that, the meal barrel didn't run out and the oil, cruise of oil never dried up. And for many days, watch this. For many days, she and her household and the man of God ate for three and a half years. I'm telling you, I wish I had some help. For three and a half years, she, her son, and the man of God, her whole household ate for three and a half years. One little cake. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, trying to get here. It's not the size of the cake. It's obeying what you hear that caused them to eat for three and a half years. Glory to God. Go look it up. Three and a half years just by obeying. Listen, I'm going to make this for me and my son. We're going to eat it and die. He says, listen, okay, if that's what you think, what I need you to do is obey what you hear right here and watch God. Watch him bring it to pass. Watch him open up doors that no man can close. Watch him close doors that no man can open. Watch him make a way where it seemed to be no way. I'm telling you, don't you be like Esau today. See this day 
For those of you who are, are already planning to support this ministry or wherever you are, whatever ministry you are part of, when it's time to give, see it as an opportunity, not just a challenge. This is an opportunity for me to obey God. This is an opportunity for me to give what God wants me to do. Give. This is an opportunity for me to shut down, totally abandon the mindset of Esau. When we give, folks, we demonstrate the grace of God. In Luke chapter 11, uh, Jesus began to tell, tell his parable. He says, I want you to understand that these Pharisees, what they do is they tithe and uh, the least amount, that anything they got, they do tithe. He says, you ought to tithe. If you read that, I think verse 30, uh, 30 uh, 42, somewhere in there, if you read that in New Living, he said, you ought to tithe. Yeah, you should tithe. He says, but you left out the more weightier matter. And that is showing mercy to others, showing grace to others. So there's something more important than money. And that is being grace, full of grace and being gracious. Do what you hear today. If you're sowing into this ministry, do what you hear today. Allow God to give you uh, wisdom uh, there's three ways you can do it. You can go through Cash App. You can go through PayPal. Or you can go through the church app. But obey God today. Do what do what he's telling you to do. And, and put yourself in a position where you live a bountiful life. Trust in the Lord. And lean not to your own understanding. And he will direct your path. That's the will of God for your life. And that's the word of God for you today. Amen. Uh, if you're in this place, in, in, in this place, if you if you if you're watching us today and Jesus is not Lord of your life, you have not received him as Lord and Savior, you're lost. And you will continue to be lost until you receive him and as Lord, as Savior. So here's your opportunity. Will you repeat this after me? Say, Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. I believe that he was buried and after three days he rose again. So I receive him now as my Savior and I receive him as my Lord. And I give you thanks and praise for that. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've done that, you're born again. You're part of the family, and we want to welcome you to the family. Inbox me. Uh, let me know uh, that you prayed that prayer. And, uh, man, we would love to have you. Uh, and it would be my privilege, my honor to be your pastor. If, if, if God is leading you towards Spirit and Truth Christian Center, uh, you can do that. And it won't be very long. We'll, we'll be back together in the building. And uh, we'd love to see you and have you a part of the ministry. God bless you and keep you as our prayer. Thank you for uh, supporting this ministry. I want to thank you in advance for every seed that's sown today. Let me do this. Father, I, I want to I, I pray right now for a supernatural increase on every seed that's sown. Uh, I touch and agree uh, with uh, Sister Jane Snowden on her seed today. That uh, supernatural increases her supernatural debt cancellation in the name of Jesus. I declare it for each and every one of us that and, and, and most of all, Father, I pray that, that each and every one of us will be able to hear your voice clearly and we will obey what we hear in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Until we see you again, be strong in the Lord and in the power is might. God bless you.